All right, hi you guys. I'm sorry for another raw vlog, but as you guys have seen in the title, Summer is sick because she ingested a foreign object and we're currently trying to flush that out. But I'm sharing with you this experience and the tips that I can give you now, just so that, you know, should it ever happen to you, <laughs> knock on wood, I mean your dogs, I hope not, you wouldn't be as clueless as I was. So let's dive into it. Okay, so what happened? Uh, yesterday, I was actually shooting videos spe uh, specifically for YouTube. I took a break, a one month break. I needed it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't share. I just needed the break. <laughs> but I have a couple of videos already ready to be posted this August. So I was shooting for several videos in advance and my camera set up. There's like a screen here. That's why if you guys would notice, if I'm not looking at the lens, I'm looking to check if I'm still on frame and stuff like that, or at least if the dogs are on frame rather than myself. And as I was doing that, uh, I have clips that I'll show you. As you can see here, Summer just keeps uh, sitting and then lying down, sitting and lying down, sitting and lying down. And that went on and on as I was shooting for maybe an hour or maybe two. And I started noticing it. That's why I would keep looking on the, <laughs> on the flip screen. And I just knew that it was a sign that she was restless. In my experience, that was her way of telling me that she needs help. And so what I did first, I brought her down and then she went straight to the door and asked to go out and that's usually her sign that she wants to go potty. So we went to potty but then nothing happened and then we went back up and I shot another video and then it was the same story over and over. That went on until like around 11.45 and then she started gagging. She didn't vomit but she started gagging and I'm like oh, okay there's definitely something wrong. I wasn't too worried because I was carrying her and I knew she wasn't in pain whatsoever. She wasn't panting the first thing I did was check her vital signs, but then everything was normal or seemed normal, but she was still very, very restless. And then later on, she starts vomiting. Maybe she vomited twice. And I still went down, up and down, at least five times to go potty. And then on the fifth time I stayed down there, I noticed another pile of vomit, so that's like three. So what I did was I gave her antacids and an anti-vomit med that I still had from Bailey's last prescription. So what I do when they have such medicines, I check with my vet for an emergency prescription in cases of like emergencies like that. Like I ask them, if ever this happens again and there's no way for me to like bring them to the vet right away, can you please give me a prescription of um, what dosage I could give them? Because as much as I want to share it with you, I don't want to because I wouldn't want you to use this information and um, use it to give it to your dogs at your own bidding without really knowing what's going on or like what proper dosage would it be for your dogs. Even if they look like my dogs, they, my dogs could be heavier or vice versa, right? But I'm sharing you the tips that you can do and you can voluntarily do. You can just ask your vets for that. Um, most will not even charge, depending on your relationship with them as well. But do that, I, I highly recommend it. So anyway, I have that. So the first thing I did was I gave her antacids and the anti-vomit med with approval of my vet that should an emergency like this arise, it would be safe enough for me to be able to do that and administer it to them. And so I waited for maybe an hour or two because usually that's when the meds kick in and then she vomited. Well, she didn't vomit because I think the meds were working, but she was still gagging. And the whole time she was still very restless, like sitting and standing, sitting and standing. Thankfully, she wasn't panting, so I knew she was like having a hard time, but she was definitely expressing discomfort. So I definitely knew there was something wrong, but that was how I also made the assumption that, okay, this is not that big of an emergency yet for me to rush her to a 24 hour bed. So what I did was I scheduled for an appointment the next day. So I wanted to wait in the morning because in my opinion, I could still try to observe. Maybe she will get better. I am just getting impatient with the meds and stuff like that. So <laughs> we had a sleepless night, the two of us. And we just kept going back and forth, um, up and down, until I finally decided, okay, screw it. I'm gonna sleep downstairs. I slept at the sofa and left uh, the door open so that she can go in and out to go potty in the backyard garden. Around, I think that was around 6 a.m. I was already messaging friends uh, because I couldn't find, I, I couldn't book a schedule. There was no available schedule for our usual vet. And I was asking for recommendations here and there. And then there was one that was recommended, but then I couldn't contact them. And I knew I had a friend who, who went there. So I contacted her and long story short, we were able to get a, an appointment at around 11 a.m. So as for the results, okay, sorry, I really have notes because I know I will miss out on important things. And I think that videos like these are very important just so that, you know, you would have references like to look at because if you have anxiety like I do, you tend to overthink and you don't think straight and then you just search up all these things and it just makes things worse. But I don't know, if it's useful, great. If not, then it's just there. 
and maybe for myself in the future as well. So the results were her CBC, uh, all her blood works were in like flying colors, perfect condition. The vet was even shocked that she was already eight years old because her stats, like the normal things that should be high or low for dogs her age were all normal <laughs> except what we got for the x-ray. So the x-ray, I will project it here, shows a foreign object that she ingested. Now, if you would, I'll try to zoom if it can be seen. So if you will look up here, this is her microchip. Look at how bright it is, okay? Now I'm gonna show you the foreign object, which is over here in this area. Notice the similarities of the brightness. Now based on this, the vet and I were assuming that it could be both metal because the microchip is a metal. It's the, about the size of a grain of rice. And this one is about three times or four times the size of the microchip. So it's either a bone or a metal, or we don't know what it is. I honestly don't know. Because I was about 100% sure that it's not bone because I haven't given her bone, unless anybody in my family gave her bone. If there is one person whom I can only think of who might, might, like a very, very small chance would be my grandmother because she loves giving stuff to the dogs, even if I tell her not to so many times. <laughs> That's not something I can control. But I can only think of like, it, it could be metal. But of course, in our heads, I'm like, how the hell would she do that? In the last eight years, she has never, ever put anything in her mouth like that. She, she's not that type. So anyway, um, there's no point in doing like a blame game. So what we're going to be focusing on is the first order of business, which is to get rid of it. So she was prescribed. She was only prescribed. I, I'm actually very thankful that they only prescribed two meds. One is lactulose. I told them I actually have this because, right, I told you I have like a whole set of um, meds, like a first aid kit that I have for pets. I think I made a video on it. I'll link it up here if ever. So lactulose, I also have this. I told them I had it, but he insisted on this brand. I don't know why, but okay. So let's just follow because I really want to get rid of it the natural way. And one antacid. And for this one they highly recommended that i use the soft soft food from royal cannon the gastrointestinal recovery i don't know but he said that this is better with like the goal is to for the food to envelop the object and then it would be easier for her to flush it out down there so i wouldn't normally say yes but the thing is if it is what's gonna make it faster because i wouldn't want anything to cause i wouldn't want any of my decisions to maybe slow down the process if this will help then by let's do it because it's just gonna be three days anyway so we're gonna be back in three days if it doesn't get flushed out by then hopefully it will get flushed out so number one the most important thing is for you guys to know what's normal from what's not normal from your animals because you know Everybody else was saying, as usual, she seems fine. Why are you so paranoid? It's because I know my dogs. I know what's normal from what's not. And it's not just the vomiting. It, she wasn't even vomiting when I started noticing that there was something wrong. I just knew she was restless. I know her normal. So when she starts acting away, far away from what she normally does, it means there is definitely something wrong. Number two, always have a list of emergency vets, both your primary vet and then one that accepts emergencies 24-7. I have a, a, a series of lists for myself. I can share it for the ones here in the Philippines. I also have family from Calgary and um, New Jersey, and I know they have a list as well. I can compile those and maybe post it later in our um, community tab just for reference for people. I'll ask around my friends also in Singapore. I'm sure they do too. So in every situation, of course, um, you have to learn to observe and make the best judgments for your animal. Like as much as possible, you have to keep calm. You have to be able to decipher and make the best judgments for them, whether it is an emergency, like such a big emergency that you would need to rush to a 24 hour vet because it needs to be addressed right then and there or as soon as possible. Or if like what I did, I thought 
it wasn't that big of an emergency and I could wait a few more hours before I take her to the vet as soon as possible or like schedule an appointment. For me, any given time that you're in doubt, for me, that's an emergency already and you have to rush to the vet because I know that there's so much information on Google and so many other things, but the thing is, medicine and medical help is something totally different. We can never self-diagnose. There's a limit to what we can self-diagnose, okay? Um, animals cannot speak and relative to humans, they're much closer to kids where, you know, with kids, emergencies are like... Um, time is ticking, minutes are ticking, and if you're late, just a few minutes, it could cause mortality. And then last but not least is I would highly recommend that the next time you go for a vet vis visit, ask for maybe a list of meds that you can have as a first aid kit in your own home for any kind of stomach issues or discomfort whatsoever. Have a prescription that is made so you know how much dose you can give to your dogs and as a first aid. And yeah, those are the tips. I might post another video of documenting this. If you guys are interested, comment down below if you would want that. Because if not, then I don't think there's any need for me to post. But I know you guys would want updates. It's either I will post another video for an update. I will document my poop patrol. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. I hope no matter how small this video was able to help you in any small way. Okay?